Now, if you're like me and you have lots of different processes going on behind the scenes on your WordPress website, you may have looked into automation just to take away the hassle of manually having to control things. In this video, we're going to take a very quick look at Thrive Automator, a free solution you may want to check out for yourself. My name is Paul C. And this is WP Tuts, the channel where I help you create more effective WordPress websites and ultimately make more money. Okay, so if in the past you've ever tested out automation tools like myself, you've looked at things like Zapier, Integromat, if you've looked at WordPress ones, you may have taken a look at Uncanny Automator. There's an abundance of different options out there. Right now, I primarily use Pabli Connect. So let's take a quick look at how you get everything set up, but stick around to the end because I think you're going to find this whole video incredibly useful just to speed up the whole process of automating so many different things that happen on your WordPress website. So first of all, like I said, we're going to be using Thrive Automator. This is 100% free, but there is a little caveat to that. You do need to sign up for a free account to be able to access all the options that Thrive Automator actually provide. So if you don't want to do that, unfortunately, you're going to kind of be stuck with some very basic options. But once you've done that and you've gone ahead and installed the plugin, you're going to need to connect everything up. It's a very simple, straightforward process. It's an on-screen wizard that will take you through everything. I've already gone ahead and done that, and I've already got Thrive Dashboard and everything else set up ready to go. So let's take a quick look at how things work. So first of all, looking at the dashboard, we've got Thrive Dashboard, Thrive Automator, and General Settings. Now let's go ahead into the Thrive Dashboard to start off with. And this is where you can go ahead into the Automator Dashboard if you're ready to start creating automations. But you're probably going to need to set up some connections to start off with. Now these connections are what will happen when you trigger this automation. So for example, you may want to have someone subscribe to something or someone to pay, make a purchase on WooCommerce. And then you may want to sign them up to something like MailerLite, ActiveCampaign, and so on. So let's use MailerLite as an example in this particular video. So what we need to do is come over into the API connections. Now, don't be daunted by this. This is incredibly straightforward. And I'll show you how easy it is with MailerLite. If you're using a different option, there's going to be full documentation. If not, reach out to the technical support and ask them, where do you find the API information for your account? So let's go ahead, click on Manage Connections. This will then take us into the view where we can see any or all of the connections we have. Now, currently, I've just got this WordPress account, which you set up as part of that wizard I've just mentioned. So we're going to go ahead and add a new connection. Once you choose that option, then you can go ahead and choose what application you want to connect to. And as you can see, there are a lot of different options inside you. Lots of ones for things like ConvertKit, MailerLite, MailChimp, and so on, for dealing with your sort of autoresponders and so on. You've also got things like webinar. So I would love to see some extra ones inside you as well. You can go ahead and deal with social like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So you can see there's plenty of options. And if you are used to working with something like Zapier or Zapier, then you can connect this up to that to extend what you can do with it. But then you're kind of adding an extra level of automation on top of automation. So I would rather see it natively inside you. So let's go ahead and grab MailerLite. We'll choose that. Now that asks for that API key. You can see if you need help with this, it'll give you information about how you do this. Now I already know where to find this info. So if you're a MailerLite user, you can just simply follow along with me. Hop over into your MailerLite account, log in, and then go up to your account in the top right hand corner, click the drop down arrow, and choose the option for integrations. Inside there, you can see there's a developer's API. All you need to do is click on use. Copy the API key from there, head back over into your Thrive Themes account inside your WordPress website, and then go ahead and pop that API key in. Once you've done that, select connect, and that's now going to go ahead, make sure the API is correct, and then connect everything up. So now we've done that, everything is basically set up, we've connected, and we can use that inside this website as many times as we need to, to do different things. Let's click on done to confirm that. And now we've got this connected. If you want to delete this, you've got the option to delete it. You can simply edit this. If you make a change, your API key updates, you're using a temporary test setup, whatever option you want. And you can also go ahead and you can test this out to make sure that everything is working. Okay, so that's the first part of it done. Now we can go ahead and create our automations. So to do that, let's come back to our Thrive dashboard and let's go into Thrive Automator. Inside here, we can now go ahead and set up the trigger and the action and any other things that we want to do. So let's create our first automation. 
This allows us to choose from what appear to be some very basic options. If you're an Elemental user and you have that installed, you've also got the option to work with the Elemental form. And if you've got WooCommerce, you see WooCommerce as well. So first of all, let's go ahead and give this a name and we'll call this New Subscriber. Once we've done that, we can now go ahead and set up our trigger. Now, a trigger is an incredibly simple thing. It's what will happen, what needs to be used to trigger the action. So, for example, you may have a form being submitted. That would be the trigger. And the action would be to sign them up to the autoresponder inside MailerLite. Let's go ahead and take a look at what triggers we have. If we click inside this search area at the top, you can see this now shows us a breakdown of the same sections you can see underneath. But we can drill down a little further. For example, if you go into general where there's only one trigger, you can have this be triggered at a certain date and time. If you're using WordPress as a standalone product, you can see you've got 10 different triggers. So users leave comments and you post is published and so on. So you may want to use this to automatically do something when a new post is created and then you want maybe an email sent out to your subscribers, that kind of thing. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to simply come down and we're going to say user creates a new account. And you see now we've got the option to always trigger. Inside here, you can see we've got various different options, and these will depend upon what you choose as the first part of this trigger process. So you can see always trigger will always trigger whenever a created account is set up. But you can do other things like last logged in, registration date, and so on. So there's a lot of different options inside here. We'll leave this to be always triggered, so whenever a new account is created, this will be triggered. We'll click Done. So that's our trigger now set up. We can go ahead and click Add Another Action. And now you can see we've got some more options inside here. We've got things like filters, delays, and so on. So for this example, let's say we want to set a delay. We'll say that we want to set this to be hours, and we'll put a value of one hour. So what this will do is once that trigger happens, it'll pause and wait for one hour before it does the actual action. Now we can click another action. So we can build this up to be as complex as we want to. You're not limited to just one action taking place. You could set a trigger and delays and filters and so on, and then do other things from that point on. So now you may want to do something really simple like email. So we can click on there, and you can see we can say add user to autoresponder. Now it says choose from the services and list of APIs you've got set up. If we expand that, MailerLite is our only option. But again, you may have more than one autoresponder tool, and you may want to use this for various different purposes. Maybe one to do with WooCommerce, one to do with new users subscribing, those kinds of things. So we'll say MailerLite. That then goes ahead, connects up to your MailerLite account using that API, and you can do various different things. If we click, this will then give us a list of all of the different mailing lists we've got set up inside our MailerLite or whatever account you're using. So I'm just going to use this for the WP Touch, the basic general catch-all. Then you've got field mapping. So we'll click to open this up. You can click on refresh. That will go ahead and refresh everything. But you can see we can now select keys. And this is basically the various different keys you may have when someone goes ahead and signs up. So for this, you want to just use something as simple as the email. Then we can say the value to set and click on the little dynamic option. And you can see registered user. We can click on there and you can see this comes up with a range of different options. And we'll say user's email. So what we're effectively doing is saying what field are we looking for inside MailerLite in this example? And then what field from WordPress are we going to connect it up to? So we're just kind of connecting those two together. If you want to add more options in, you may, for example, want to have something like you take their name. So you can click Add New, select a key, and we'll say Name. Then you can go into your value, click on your little database icon, say registered user, and we can then scroll through until we find the WordPress username, user's first name, and so on. So for this one, we'll just say user's first name. So we can then personalize the email that gets sent out. Then we're going to click on Done. So now what we've done is we've basically set up a simple trigger, a delay, and an action. So in other words, when a user creates a new account, wait one hour and then add them to the WP Touch mailing list inside MailerLite and then connect up the email address and the username to that relevant information inside MailerLite. And then we can say save and finish. And you can see that tells us what's actually going to happen. And we've currently got this set as inactive. So all we need to do is select it and we've made it active. Simple as that. We've now created our automation. Every time someone goes ahead and enrolls on this particular website, after one hour, that information will be sent over to my mailing account, and then I've got them on my mailing list, and I can start sending them regular information.
So that's one really simple example. Let's take a look at something if you're a WooCommerce user, you may want to use. So let's go ahead and add a new automation. This time we're going to choose WooCommerce. We'll select that from there and you can see now we've got a range of different options associated with WooCommerce. Things like when an order is placed or a refund is handled or there's a status change, for example, an order goes from being processed to completed. You can then go ahead and choose what you want to happen. So let's say when an order is complete, we'll say Woo order complete. Again, you can see you've got those options for when do you want to trigger this. So we're going to say we want this to always trigger. So whenever an order is completed, this will then trigger. Again, we can click on done. We can then go in and add an action. And again, we've got things like delays. We've also got more options, things like filters, which we can select a filter. And you can see if we want to set various different things inside here. So we may say that once an order is over a certain value, for example, they get added to one list. However, if it isn't, they don't get added to that list, those kinds of things. So if we come down until we find the option for the payment, and you can see we've got grand total, for example, we'll select that select a value and we can say more than and we'll just say a hundred so whatever currency we're working dollars pounds doesn't matter if you want to add another filter you can click and you can do that and you can see again we can use those same options inside there if you don't want to add another one in you've accidentally done this we click on the x to get rid of it and we we'll say yes delete it so now again we'll say done now we can go ahead and add another action in again we can say we want to delay this so we may say we want to delay this now for 30 minutes click done Add another step and say we want to do something like email again. And we'll say we're going to say tag user and autoresponder or add them to an autoresponder. So we'll say add user and autoresponder. Again, we can choose our API connection, which in this example again is MailerLite. Choose our mailing list. Again, I'll just use this to be the same email list. That's fine for this example. And we'll go ahead and do our mapping. For this, we're just going to go ahead, set the name. We're going to say registered user. And again, we're going to just go ahead and grab the user's first name. But you can if you want to use WooCommerce order information. So you can come in here and you can see we've got billing first names. So we'll say we'll grab that and we'll go ahead and add another one in. And we'll say we want this to be email. Again, we're going to come into this time with the WooCommerce order. We'll come through until we find billing email and we'll click on done. So now we set up another kind of automation. The trigger is when an order is completed from WooCommerce and the total is over a hundred dollars, pounds, whatever, wait 30 minutes and then add them to that mailing list. And this is some really simple examples of how this works. Again, all we need to do is click on save and finish or click active to activate this and then click save and finish. And then we have two automations set up inside our account. You can see on the left hand side, it gives us a little bit of an overview. And if we want to test things out or we see there's kind of orders and things going through, we can come to the logs section and we can find out all the information about what's going on inside there. Currently, there's nothing because we haven't run any. But that's how we go about doing it. That's how you create these automations. It's relatively simple and straightforward. You can create as complex or as simple as you'd like them to be. And you can create as many as you need for your website. This just streamlines the whole process of working with any kind of content on your website without having to manually handle these different things. Now, as always, all of the links to everything I've covered in this video are in the description below. And if you've got any comments, questions, or feedback, let me know in that comment section. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tats, and until next time, take care.